Today's video is the beginning of a mini-series on interesting mathematical induction techniques. Today we're going to talk about something called forward-backward induction, which is a way to do induction that's a little bit different than our typical way of doing induction. And it has interesting applications, as we'll see, by giving a short proof of the arithmetic geometric mean inequality, which is a classic inequality that says that the sum of n positive integers all over n, in other words, the average of n non-negative integers is at least their geometric mean, meaning their product, and then taking the nth root of that. Now, the interesting part about this is typically the arithmetic geometric mean inequality is a little bit difficult to actually prove, but we'll see how forward and backward induction actually is a really nice proof of this. So before starting with the forward and backward induction, what we're going to do is think about what induction really is about in general. So induction works kind of in the following way. You have a bunch of statements indexed by the positive integer. For example, the kth statement could be something like the sum of the positive integers from 1 to k is exactly this quantity, k times k plus 1 all over 2. This is just an example of a statement. We're not going to prove the specific one, but I want to set up the idea of how induction works to remind ourselves and then look at how we twist that to get forward backward induction. So we have statements indexed by the positive integers, and in general induction, we have the following situation. If you can prove that p of 1 is true, and then you can also prove that if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is true, then you get that all these statements are true, period. And the idea behind why this works is, let's say you knew that p of 1 was true from this statement. Now, because of this, with k equals 1, you get that p of 2 is true. Now applying this again with k equals 2, you get that p of 3 is true. And this cascades to give you that all of your statements are true. Now how does this interesting forward and backward induction work? Well, it puts a twist on this statement right over here. Instead, it replaces it with two things. One, which is called the forward part, is that if p of k is true, then p of 2k is true. So there's a little bit of a jump in the forward part. And then there's this backward part that if p of k is true, then the previous statement, p of k minus 1, is true. So let's see how this works and why it tells us that all our statements would have to be true. So first of all, from our first part, we have p of 1 is true. Okay, now because of this forward step, there's a jump to p of 2 being true. Applying that forward step again, we get that p of 4 is true. And then again, we get p of 8 is true. And then now, using the backward step, we can cascade and get that all of these other statements are true as well. Okay, so let's see how this actually works in practice by giving a nice proof of the arithmetic geometric mean inequality using forward and backward induction. So to start, I want to prove some base cases for this. Um, so first of all, when n is 1, you kind of get vacuously that this is true. The left side is a1 over 1, and the right side is the first root of a1, which is a1 itself. So let's prove a little bit of a more interesting case when n equals 2. In this case, we want to establish that if a1 and a2 are non-negative numbers, then their average is greater than or equal to the square root of their product. Now, since both of these quantities are non-negative, we can establish that the square of the left side is greater than or equal to the square of the right side. So let's actually take the difference of these two and see what happens. Expanding the left side, we get a1 squared plus 2a1a2 plus a2 squared all over 4. And then we're subtracting the square of the right side, which is a1a2. Okay, now we can find a common denominator of 4 here, and then this simplifies to a1 squared minus 2a1a2 plus a2 squared all over 4, which indeed is the quantity a1 minus a2 all over 2 squared. And because that's the square of a number, that has to be a non-negative quantity. All right, so... As a consequence, this entire expression is not negative, but we got this from rearranging this here, so that means that this side is greater than or equal to this side. And since we squared non-negative numbers, that means the content inside of here is in fact greater than or equal to the content inside of here. 
So that establishes the n equals 2 case. So we actually know what happens when n equals 1 and n equals 2. So now let's actually use the idea of forward-backward induction to get the rest of the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. So we're going to introduce things explicitly here. So we're going to say let p sub n be the statement that we have right over here, that the sum of the average of n non-negative numbers is greater than or equal to their geometric mean. So again, with forward-backward induction, we need to prove that if p of n is true, then p of 2n is true. And if p of n is true, then p of n minus 1 is true. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So first of all, let's suppose that p of n is true and look at the statement p of 2n. So that's taking the average of 2n positive integers and then trying to establish that that's greater than or equal to the geometric mean of those. Now the thing is we can write this as the average of the average of the first n numbers and the average of the last n numbers. And the reason to do this is because our assumption is that the statement p of n is true, meaning that we have the geomet arithmetic geometric mean inequality when we have n non-negative things. Okay, and then here we'll have to divide by n. All right, so using our inductive hypothesis, we get that this is greater than or equal to, and actually we should switch out the denominators here so that they match up. Then we'll get that this is greater than or equal to the nth root of the product of the first n non-negative numbers involved, plus the same thing for the next n, all over 2. Okay, and now, using the arithmetic geometric mean inequality for the case of two different numbers, this is going to be greater than or equal to the square root of the product of the two things in the numerator, the nth root of the product of a1 through an, times the nth root of the product of an plus 1 up to a2n. Okay, but that actually is exactly the product of the numbers a1 through a2n all raised to the 1 over 2n, or in other words, the 2nth root, by clearing what's happening right over here. So we do get this nice situation that if p of n is true, then p of 2n is true. So now let's complete this by doing the backward step that if pn is true, then p of n minus 1 is true. So we somehow want to exploit the n case to handle the n minus 1 case. In the n minus 1 case, we only have n minus 1 numbers. So we'll write down those n minus 1 numbers. And now we want to use this somehow to actually do something. And by this, I mean use this. We don't have an nth number in the n minus 1 case, so we can select one. And the idea is to actually select the average of these things that you have already. So let's see what happens when we do that. We'll take the average of these n minus 1 things as our nth thing, and we'll divide all of that by n. So essentially what we're doing is setting this quantity to a sub n. Now if we do that, this is going to be greater than or equal to, by the n case, the geometric mean of the product of these things. So we'll get a1, a2, up to a n minus 1, but then times this quantity, a1 plus all the way to a n minus 1, all over n minus 1. Okay, so you kind of see where this might be going right over here. We have this term already enveloped over here, and we have this term here together with this piece that relates to this term. So we'll be able to maybe rearrange things to isolate um, this n minus one fold product. Okay, the first thing we notice is that if we clear denominators on the left side, we'll have to multiply all of these by n minus one. So together with the n minus one copies of these and the one copy in the numerator, we'll get n copies which will cancel with this n right over here. And so as a consequence, the left-hand side actually is a1 plus a2 up to a n minus 1, all over n minus 1. And we're given now that that is greater than or equal to this entire thing right over here. 
Okay, so now we can raise all of this to the n. We'll get that product there, and we'll have the nth power of this. And now, luckily for us, we have the nth power of this thing and a copy of it right over here. So if we erase this copy, that's the same as raising the left-hand side to the n minus 1. And then now, taking nth roots of each side, we'll have the, or n minus 1th roots of each side, we'll have the n minus 1th root of this, and then we'll have just this piece right over here with the exponent eliminated, giving us exactly the n minus 1 case. And so it is true that if p of n is true, then p of n minus 1 is true. And now we're set. We have our base cases together with our forward step and our backward step to establish the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. So this is really cool because if you try to use regular induction to do this, there are a lot of slick moves you have to do in the inductive step in order to establish things. So a very cool application of an interesting type of induction, and we're going to see more interesting applications of different types of inductions in future videos.